How many of you have heard of React Fiber? Everyone. Sweet. Cool. So I don't need to do this talk. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm the co-founder of GoRep, which is um, an early, early stage startup. We're a referral marketing platform. Um, and I also started today as a contractor at um, Pac Mags, Pacific Magazines as a front-end developer. And that's, that's my Twitter. And, oh, shit. Yep. What's going on? There we go. Cool. So, React version 16, which um, they're labeling as React Fiber, um, is a ground-up rewrite of React. So everything from the documentation to the rendering algorithms, everything. Um, and so they've been working, this is uh, off the back of a proof of concept, which, um, which Jordan Walk, who, if you don't know, is the creator of React, he started working um, about two years ago in a completely different language, um, trying to solve the problem that Facebook was having with um, a really deep hierarchy of components um, with a lot of things going on, you know, data changes and, and animations and everything, that they wanted to achieve 60 frames per second. So he came up with the idea that they can incrementally render um, uh, across, uh, uh, in their rendering algorithm. So anyway, so 60 frames per second was the goal of React. Um, I think that, you know, like across uh, the whole development ecosystem with um, with WebAssembly and, um, and progressive web apps, Every, everything's going towards trying to have a, a native experience in the browser, at, and, and that's uh, 60 frames per second. So just to give you a bit of an update on where Fiber's at, so they've been saying, I think since I started hearing about Fiber last October, that it's coming soon. Um, they've been saying, oh, it's gonna, be, it's, it's gonna come out in the next couple of months, but at the moment, it's in production on messenger.com. Um, and there's a website, uh, isfiberreadyyet.com, which... No. Oh, it just says no. Yeah, it says <laughs> no. So um, if you want to keep, if you wanna, um, keep up to date with it, um, uh, these are all the unit tests that they're um, currently tracking. Um, and yet, at this stage, they're doing a lot of bug fixes and, and stuff like that. And um, if you want to actually play around with it, you can clone the React repo. I think it's actually merged into master now, so um, you can play around with that if you want to. So what I'm going to talk about is um, the main features of React Fiber. So um, the incremental rendering part is, is I guess, the, the, one of the key features of React Fiber, but there's actually a couple of other really cool things that they're doing. Um, so. The first one is that they're going to um, they're actually going to handle um, errors um, in the render API of of a component. So basically, that basically it's going to be a try. It's it's the implementation of a try catch um, on the render function. So has anyone? Uh, I'm sure like you've all had the problem when you know you're you um, pass a null. An, a null or an empty string or something like that, and you get the error in the in the console, like cannot render because it's a null or it's not it's not a, um, an object. So this here this here is actually going to handle or catch that error, and you're going to be able to um, yeah uh, hand, have an error message or or um, um, like a global error message that you can pass it to, um, and or even just try and re-render the function. So. So the next one is that you're gonna be able to um, return multiple, um, multiple elements from render. So at the moment, you know, you've got your, you wrap everything in a div or a span or something like that. You end up with all these extra random elements. Um, it creates a lot of problems if you wanna use something like display table or, um, you know, just with other CSS things. So you're gonna be able to um, return something like that um, in, in React Fiber. Cool, so the next one is that you're gonna, that at the moment, um, there's a whole bunch of different custom renderers which use the React internal core. So obviously like all the, all the main ones, React DOM, React Na Native and Preact, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. So at the moment, um, it's quite hard to create your own rendering algorithm, uh, custom renderer using the React API. 
So they're going to provide a declarative API um, in their documentation in React Fiber, and you're basically going to be able to use their reconciliation or core algorithm um, for your own renderer. Cool. So this here, I guess, is the, the key part to React Fiber. And it's the, the new, reconcil new reconciler um, in React. So can anyone tell me what the reconciler in React does? V. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it means that when, when there's some sort of new state, then you don't need to re-render the whole tree. So that's the core algorithm that decides what needs to be updated in the virtual DOM. So as part of, um, of Jordan Walk's initial proof of concept, what he was trying to work out was that he wanted to be able to pause work and come back to it later. He wanted to be able to assign priority to different types of work. And he wanted to be able to cache or, or reuse previously completed work and then also abort work if, it, if it's no longer needed. So what is, what is work? So types of work are user events such as clicks, different input um, in forms, animations, and data changes. So at the moment, what happens is that React uses the, the call stack um, to basically execute their um, their new renders in, in their reconciliation algorithm. So it, it's just a, it's just the call stack executes with whatever is at the top of the call stack. So if <laughs> is it up anywhere else? No. <sighs> okay. So um, so these types of work. So what do you think is the most important type of work? for a good user experience? Animation. Animation, yeah. So, so, sorry? Yeah, user input. So, it, is it important that um, data coming from an API call is rendered before the next frame of animation? No, so at the moment in React, um, on the call stack, if the, if the new data coming from the API is at the, at the top of the call stack, then it's gonna be executed before the animation. So you're gonna see a skip, a skip or a, um, a shaky animation. So what React Fiber is doing is, is it's breaking all these chunks of work into individual fibers. And so an individual fiber is a virtual stack frame. So if you rely on the, on the call stack, it will keep doing work until the stack is empty. So a virtual stack frame allows them to, um, similar to having a virtual DOM, is that they can stop execution on one of the subroutines in the call, call stack, save it, go and execute something that's of higher priority, like an animation or, or an input event, and then come back to the, the, um, the less priority um, um, afterwards. So this is kind of like, I think everyone nearly has all, all, all seen this, but I still kind of like come back to this and look at it because I think it's so amazing when you actually, when you actually hear what's going on um, in this animation. So, so this, this here is a, is a really deep hierarchy tree right from the top element all the way down. And in each, each, um, each one of these circles, has a render function with a while loop of like 10,000, uh, it loops over 10,000 times, plus it's expanding, plus um, it's got the on hover event. So if you have a look at it with the normal call stack, it, it's really, really janky. And then with the new fiber algorithm with the prioritization and the virtual stack frame, it's like a completely smooth animation which I think is really exciting. Cool, so I guess what does this mean as front end or, or you know, React developers? Um, should we be worried about a new version of React or a complete rewrite of React? And um, I think that this, this, this is kind of the only thing that um, has, has um, 
alerted me to anything I need to be wary of of the next version of React because because there's 25,000 component React components in Facebook and because there's you know so many companies internationally that rely on this they can't have any breaking changes in the next version of React or the version after that so there'll be these new new APIs new declarative APIs that we can take advantage of but the current ones are going to stay ex exactly the same um, and the only thing that I think anyone needs to be wary of is that Andrew Clark did a tweet which I think V pointed out to me like two months ago um, that Fiber has a strategy for pausing, splitting, rebasing and aborting updates that doesn't work if you deviate from component state. So if you are using a, a global um, state management like Redux, like MobX, um, you're still going to see some benefits from React Fiber but, um, but the they're basically recommending that you use set state as much as you can um, and they use that all throughout their 25,000 comp React components at Facebook. So, um, yeah, cool. And yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Any questions? <laughs>